with the large silver cover, I think they should keep nice and warm. What do you think, dear? Well, <laughs>
50 questions with uh, five possibilities to check. That is yes, absolutely yes, not sure, no, and absolutely no. Are you ready, dear? All right, now, <clears throat> the first question is, do you constantly wash your hands? <laughs> constantly? Oh, I would say no, wouldn't you agree? No, perhaps even absolutely no. All right, number two. Do you enjoy spending a lot of time by yourself? Well, that's easy, isn't it? Of course you do. Absolutely, yes. Three, uh, should sex education be taught outside the home? Well, I would say no, wouldn't you agree? <laughs>
stuck in here and start digging holes? <laughs> well, why not? After all, uh, why, why can't I dig a hole if I want to? Well, look, it ain't up to me, Lynn. Well, who is it up to? All right, I'll ask Bobby. Bobby Yeah. 
that's better. Now what do you think of it? Yeah, I guess. It was my attempt into the tactile. Did, did you do these paintings too? Yes, well this is mine. This is rainbow with egg underneath and elephant. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did it hit you? Very interesting. <laughs> this here was done by a friend of mine. I modeled for it, so he gave it to me as a gift. <laughs> yes, don't you like it? Oh, sure. <laughs> Super. 
a car there? Oh, 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 yes, that's my car. I'll... Mark that down, Bill. We'll positive identification. We get you to sign it, and we take out a warrant on Madame Chardin. You, you mean uh, arrest, sir? That's right. We've had dealings with her before, Padre. And every time we think we've got her, somehow she's managed to talk her way out of it. Don't you worry, Padre. She won't talk her way out of this. Hey, who are you? Oh, hello, Father. I said, who are you? Oh, 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 this is Harold Chasen, the boy I was telling you about. The one who drove off with the old lady? <coughs> Take his name down, Double. What? What's... Where's Maud? That's what I was going to ask you. <coughs> I don't know. You're a friend of hers, aren't you? What? Well, I... Come on, kid. It's a simple yes and no. Are you a friend of hers? Yes. Mark that down, Noble. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, run a check on him for any outstanding violations. <laughs> uh, maybe not, but your friend has just been accused of stealing a car. You, you know, I've been thinking it over, Miss Spectre, and I don't want to make a big fuss. Uh, I've got my car back now, and, and, and don't you think it would be better if we just dropped the whole thing? Wait a minute, Padre. I've been waiting to pin something on this gal for a long time. You can't just walk out on me now. But the publicity and the trial. Now, surely, if she promises never to do it again. You don't seem to realize, Padre, a crime has been committed. Now, that's not something to be taken lightly. Oh, 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 oh no. I speak to her very firmly. <laughs> but I don't think we want to prosecute. All right, Padre, if that's your decision. But just remember, it's you who has to take responsibility for the next far-out crazy stunt that she pulls. What is it, Dobel? It just came over the radio, sir. We want it at the zoo right away. The zoo? Yes, sir. They just reported a stolen seal. What? <laughs> a seal? <laughs> My God, there are more nuts around here than I thought. All right, let's go. But you, you tell your friend from me that one of these days she's going to slip up, and when she does, I'm going to throw the book at her. You know, no, I, I think he means what he says, Harold, so you'd better tell her to be careful. <laughs> yes, Father. Well, I know she means well, but her impulsiveness is going to get her into trouble. All right, Father, I'll, I'll tell her. After all, she just can't keep taking things. There are rules. Hello, Harold. How are you? Oh, Father Finnegan, how nice to see you. Been to any interesting funerals lately? <laughs> well, I'm afraid, Madam, this is not a social call. I have something very important to tell you. Oh, how exciting. Let's go in and have a cup of tea. No. I mean, it's so much nicer out here. More peaceful. No animals. Harold, what is the matter with you? Come on in, Father. We'll have a nice hot cup of tea. All I want to say is that you are a very lucky woman. Oh, I know that, Father. I have decided not to prosecute. Prosecute what? Well, you took my car off yesterday. Don't you remember? What did it look like? <laughs> Blue Volkswagen, uh, white wall tires, a uh, uh, St. Christopher number on the dashboard. <laughs> Oh, I knew it, I knew it, oh sweet mother of God! <laughs> 
tearing up. Tell me. You like champagne? I don't drink. Oh, it's all right. It's all organic. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be my new experience. Oh, today. that's wonderful. And tomorrow, I'll teach you how to yoga. <laughs> oh, a lady, oh, a lady, oh.
be in Yokohama. Matching fan. It's beautiful. I'm glad we decided to eat Oriental. It was a perfect dinner. Oh, it was a perfect day. You all found this lovely, delightful way to spend an afternoon. We were soaked. You know, we should have taken that umbrella over there. <coughs> I haven't thought of this in years. You know, this used to be my defense against picket lines and, and rallies and political meetings and, and being dragged off by the police and being attacked by the thugs of the opposition. <laughs> oh, dear. That ah, was a long time ago. What were you fighting for? Oh, <coughs> issues, justice, rights. to her 
side and with a long sigh, she collapsed in their arms. I decided then that I enjoyed being dead. I understand. A lot of people enjoy being dead. But they're not really dead at all. They're backing out of life. You've got to take a chance. You've got to risk it. Even though you get hurt, you've got to risk it. Go. Go, team, go. Give me an L. <laughs> Give me an R. Give me a B. Give me an E. L-I-B-E, live! You don't have anything to talk about in the locker room. <laughs>
ever happened to him. From what we can gather, he shipped off on a freighter to Samoa. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, good. I told him to do that. I said that's the only way you're going to get rid of that twitch. That may be. But he left his papers in such disarray that Barclay Brothers is only now starting to sort things out. That brings me to you. I have a list here of all of the furniture that Barclay Brothers delivered to this house. There does not seem to be, however, any indication of any payment of any sort. Now, unless payment is made immediately, I have a court order to authorize the repossession of said furniture. Can you make the payment? Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't think so. All right, guys. Take everything on the list. Are you going to take everything, Inspector? Everything. You know, I'm not going to pretend that this isn't giving me a great deal of comfort, but you've been a pain in my side for a long time, but I'm not an unfeeling man. Now, the county runs an old folks' home, and if you were to sell this house, I bet you could move right in there. This house? Yes. Wasn't this house on the list?
just but you know what? We could hoist sail and, and strike out for the horizon. Oh, that would be fun. I used to love to do that. Especially when you couldn't see land and saw nothing but the waves and the sea. What was that? Oh, a long time ago. I remember they used to say it was dangerous or unbecoming. Those were the terms they used to keep us adventuresome people in tow. It's all right. We'll pull them along with us, won't we? We'll hitch them to our balloon. You could. I don't know about me. <coughs> Why do you say that? Well, most people aren't like you. They're locked up in themselves. They live in their castles <coughs> all alone. They're like me. Everybody lives in a castle. But there's nothing to prevent you from lowering the drawbridge and, and going out visiting. Would you agree that we live alone and we die alone, each in our own cell? Yes, in a way. But all the more reason to, to make it pleasurable with good books and, and, and warm fires and good memories. Besides, you can always jump over the fence and sleep out under the stars. Maybe, but that takes courage. Why? Well, aren't you afraid? Of what? The known I know, the unknown I want to know. Besides, I've got friends. Who? Humanity. It's a lot of friends. <laughs> and you know they're all friendly. You know, I remember a story from the Orient about two architects that went to see the Buddha. They were both building projects and they'd run out of money and they said, went to the Buddha to see if he could help them. He said, well, I don't know, but I'll try. So he went along. Now the first architect was building a bridge and the Buddha was very impressed with it. He said, that's a very good bridge. And he began to pray. All of a sudden, it was white gold. On its back was enough gold to finish the project. <coughs> and the Buddha said, take the gold and go build more bridges. So the first architect went away happy. <coughs> now the second architect was building walls. And the Buddha was equally impressed with that. He said, that's a very good wall. He began to pray. And all of a sudden, in came the white gold. He sat on the architect. <laughs> well, we don't need any more walls. What we do need are more bridges. Gee, I wish I brought my knitting up here. I could be doing it while we're sat while we're sitting. Oh, I'll get it for you. Okay. How about some nuts? I'm getting a little hungry. Are you? A little. Okay. There, there is an orange in, in my bag. Oh, I guess I'll come down too. Hey, wasn't that fun? Yeah, another new experience for me. See over there in that hill over there, there's an even higher tree. We could go over there and, and uh, see the sunset. All right, anything you say. I'd climb the Matterhorn if you came. Oh, you'd like it. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I dared him to. You see, he had dared me to swim the health park, but I had to come up with something. Would <laughs> <laughs> you like an orange? Thank you. Whatever happened to your husband? He died in the war. I never did find out how. You know, there was so much confusion after it was all over. By the time I was able to ask questions, nobody knew. Traveled around a lot together. Oh, yes. All over the world. You know, I remember a day much like this in, in Shanghai. Blue sky, white clouds. It's beautiful. So big and so blue. To think, beyond all that is the vast blackness of space. <coughs> but speckled with uncountable stars, as my friend used to say. She says, they're out there. Even though you can't see them, they're there. Just another example of the limits of human perception. Maud, are you religious? What does that mean? Do you believe in God? Of course.
God inside of us that tells us where we've been. A little bit of God outside of us that tells us where we're going. It's pretty mystical. Yes, it is mystical. You know, sometimes I don't know whether to say our father or our mother. But when I look around and see all this, I know it's very creative. Yeah, this is really nice here. Makes me feel like a kid. You know what I'd like to do? What? Somersaults. Look over here. No, I feel stupid. Everybody has a right to make an ass of themselves. <laughs> 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 Maybe Madame Aurier would 
don't know what else I can do at this point. Really, I just don't. What? Uh, wait a minute, Betty. Hold on. Harold, where have you been? I've been out all night. Well, I know that. You don't have to tell me that. I've been a bag of nerves all morning. What I want to know is, where did you spend the night? Mother, I'm going to get married. I beg your pardon? I'm going to get married. Uh, Betty, hold the phone a minute. <laughs> now listen, Harold, you cannot just uh, walk in here and say something like that and walk out if this is serious. It is. Well then, I, I, I must know who it is. Who is it? Oh no. It's not the actress, is it? No. Oh, thank God. Well then, uh, who is it? Is it uh, the little uh, blonde or the mousy brunette? It's neither. Neither? You haven't met her yet. Well, Harold, who is she here? What's she like? Very beautiful. Oh, Harold, well, uh, where did you meet her? In church one day. Really? <laughs> oh, does uh, Father Finnegan know her? Yes, they're good friends. Mother, I've got to buy an engagement ring. I'm going to propose tonight. Oh, now, uh, Harold, wait a minute. You you can't just uh, race into this. I mean, uh, what is her background? What's her family like, dear? Where, where is she from? Oh, Austria. Uh, uh, they were Austrian aristocracy. Oh, socially prominent, aren't they? Uh -huh. <laughs> I think she said she was a countess. A countess? Really?
everything is topsy-turvy. Yes. Would you like sugar? Uh, no, uh, just plain. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, perhaps this uh, young girl is moving in here, do you think? Well, it might be. Uh, could have to. Here, yeah, how about it? How about a cake? Oh, oh no, thank you. Well, go ahead, they're very good. Well, all right, just one. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, oh my, that is a lovely old teapot. Yes, isn't it? Oh. It belonged to my late husband's family. Oh, really? Yes, silver and, and uh, brass. Oh, yes. Do you like it? Oh, very much, yes. I'd like to make a present for you, baby. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Yes, I'd love you to have it. Oh, no. I couldn't. I, why not? I'm sure you take wonderful care of it. Well, uh, let me pay you something oh, for it. I don't even leave. This is yours. Oh, well, that's so sweet of you. Thank you. That's so <laughs> kind of you. Would you have another another cake? Well, yes, I will. <laughs> They're very tasty. Yes, yeah, take two. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know this tea is just delicious. Oh, yes, it is. It's oak straw tea. I love it. Really? Well, I'll have to get some. You know, my friend Betty is... Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I haven't introduced myself. I'm sorry. I'm Mrs. Helen Chasen. You're not Harold's mother. Why, yeah. Oh, I'm so glad to meet you. I heard so much about you. And you're a... Uh, I'm the Countess Matilda Chardin. Countess? Yes, that's a silly title. Call me Maud. <laughs> Maud? Maud? Yes, Helen. Uh, then uh, you know my son? Oh, yes, we're such good friends. He's a dear boy, so intelligent and sensitive. Oh, I love him so much. But then, you know about that, don't you? Yes. And tell me, this young lady you were looking for, was that somebody you wanted him to meet? No, no, not exactly. Oh, I do feel he should go out and meet more people, don't you? I know you tried with the computer dates. Harold told me all about it. But he does need to go out and meet people on his own. Yes, that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, you huh. need to be. He's bound to leave the nest sometime. Oh, yes. Uh, you said that uh, you were leaving here. Yes, that's right. I'll be gone by midnight. That's definite. Oh, yes. I'm off to New Horizons. Then Harold hasn't told you uh, about, about what? Well, uh, you see, this is a, a very uh, delicate subject, and I'm not sure quite how to broach it. Uh, well, but uh, has Harold ever mentioned marriage? No. Why do you ask? Well, uh, you see, he, he's a very impulsive boy, and he has this uh, this idea that, uh, well, what do you think of marriage? Oh, marriage, it's wonderful. It's a beautiful experience. Two people growing into one. But then, you know, you've been married. Yes, uh, but I mean, uh, what do you think about an older a woman marrying a younger man. I don't think it makes any difference to you. Well, yes, I do. I, I think that it, it makes a, a lot of difference. Tell yes. me, how do you feel about an older man marrying a younger woman? Well, that's different. I mean, that <laughs> is accepted. And I see. So You're afraid of what people will say. Well, I mean, after all, when I, has this been troubling you long? <laughs> well, I, I just think that an older woman, yes, who's been married before, yes, whose husband has died, that's right, I just, and now she wants to marry a younger man, well, I mean, and, oh, I Helen, just, if that's what you want, <laughs> if that's what he wants, you go marry your younger man, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I understand, <laughs> yes, it's not me I'm worried about, it's Harold, oh, well, Harold will think it's wonderful, <laughs> oh, no, uh, I don't think you should talk to him. <coughs> Is there something else bothering you? Would you like to confide in me? Yes. Why, it's, <laughs> it's the honeymoon, isn't it? What? <laughs> oh, Helen, you're a fine-looking woman. Oh, there's many a.
cock in the barnyard that would like to roost on your perch. <laughs> Uh, 
but yeah, I do. Um, intercourse. <laughs> the, the, the fact of, of your firm young body <clears throat> co-mingling co with, with the, the withered flesh, the sagging breasts, the uh, slabby buttocks of the mature female
Oh, Maud, wait! 